Hello Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to Among Trees. I'm going to be giving you a rundown of how to play Among Trees. I've been enjoying it, I've been playing it for a week or so now. Got some good stuff to this game. It is an early access, available on Epic Games Store. We're going to be playing it in normal mode, in standard mode. I have tried the hard mode, I don't recommend trying it at the moment. The game is very light on features and certain resources, and it's just not an enjoyable experience. I like difficult stuff, hence why I did my Let's Play recently in hard mode but it does make it just a really bit of a chore going around trying to find certain foods rather than maybe exploring the rest of the game. So definitely something to try out, but I think it needs a little bit more time in early access before hard mode is a viable way to play it. Anywho, this is how we're gonna start. Starting off in Among Trees, we're gonna be picking up things like fur planks. You'll find lots of these lying around also at watchtower sites that I'm gonna show you guys as well. You've got lots of sticks, lots of mushrooms. The mushrooms are what you're gonna be eating until you unlock a room where you can craft and cook food. But first off, we've got repair our cabin. It needs six fur planks and 10 sticks. So you'll find this scattered all around this area. You don't need to go too far out. And I don't recommend you do. You wanna get this unlocked as quickly as possible as it's gonna give you your save point, somewhere to sleep, and as I said, the beginnings of your crafting rooms. Unlike a lot of survival games where you normally can craft items on you, among the trees does it all at certain rooms in your cabin. So you always have to come back here and craft and prep before going out there. There may be certain things you'll be able to craft in the future, but right now you can only craft when you're at a workbench back at your cabin. So as every survival game under the sun, gathering resources is pretty much what we're gonna be doing early stages. You saw that golden chanterelle I picked up there. That is gonna be beneficial for cooking, but it's also really good for keeping your temperature up. There are lots of items in the game that will do dual benefit. They'll either obviously replenish your food, but they'll also increase your temperature so you don't freeze to death if you go into cold water or you're out too late at night where you can start getting frostbite. Both of these things can kill you if you don't get enough warmth. And you can see that on the status bar on the bottom right hand side by the thermometer. You've also obviously got your food and your sleep and then you've got your health bar. Let's face it, there's nothing genre defining or new here. It's pretty much bog standard what you find in every survival game, but it does it nicely on the right hand side. And I'm gonna show you how you can take notice of stuff. But here we go, we've got sleep, we've got a save point, and we've also, more importantly, got a storage point here to put our items in so we can go and gather more resources. Be careful when saving. If you are playing it on higher difficulties, you don't always want to save all the time, just in case you're saving at a point where it's gonna be impossible for you to go and get some food before you die. You can see the three rooms we've got, the crafting room, the storage attic, and the cooking room. More than likely, it will be the crafting room that you're going for first, then the cooking room, and then the storage attic, or possibly another room. Each time you unlock one of these, it'll open up some more options for you to craft, like a greenhouse, etc. So the crafting room needs two stump moss, three steel wire, and 12 fur planks. You can put the recipe, you can pin it to the screen, which is really useful as well. So if you've chosen hard mode, it really is hard, as I said. You'll be just spending all your time looking for mushrooms in the first 40 minutes or so, and that's not a load of fun. Instead, I would definitely put it on standard mode, but make sure that you leave the creatures on. Don't have it in zen mode, unless that's the real experience you want with no bears attacking you. That's the crucial difference. Now I'm gonna be gathering lots of items. I'm not gonna go through it right now though, just to mention what they are, and then I'm gonna explain what they do when we've unlocked the cooking room. But black mulberries, you'll find these dotted around, and there's usually one or two together. Right now I've headed to the river and I'm looking for driftwood. Now the driftwood sometimes clips into the ground, so it can be a bit hard to spot sometimes. You'll normally find it like this, so be careful, pay attention to surroundings, and pick up as much of this as possible. You should find two or three pieces within a small radius of the river and if you go along the whole side of the river, both banks, you should find at least six or seven. So I mentioned watchtower areas, you can see they're broken and this is pretty much where you're going to find a lot of resources like bolts, wire, rope and a lot more. Scattered amongst these leaf piles or rubbish piles you can find rope and bolts and in around the area you'd also find lots of the jute rope and steel rope lying around. Pipes are a bit hard to spot, these are really small, you normally find at least three of them dotted around this area as well so make sure you pick up all of them as pipes are one of the most useful resources. Now you can see a couple chests here, you've got a chest with a lock and then you've got a wooden storage chest that you need to break open with an axe and I'll show you how to craft them in a second. Second. Old rags are good for making first aid kits, you can need them in the future too. 
So you should find enough steel wire and fur planks dotted around, but that stump moss is what I just picked up there. Obviously it's on tree stumps. That can be a bit harder to find sometimes. So pay attention looking around. As nighttime draws in, it'll actually be easy to see stuff as there's a shimmer over the items on the floor. You'll also find blueprints. This is how you unlock new recipes and new items. This one is giving me a lockpick blueprint, but you can also find this in a cave as well. It does seem to be a little bit random or you get multiple blueprints that are the same. You don't need to learn them or anything once you've picked them up, they'll automatically be unlocked in your inventory when you go to your first crafting station back at your camp. You'll notice I'm starting to freeze to death. Nighttime has come in and it does get really, really cold. You'll notice the blue going around the edges of the screen like frostbite, and then it will start flashing up that you're freezing. When that goes all the way to red, you are in trouble and you have to get back to your cabin before it reaches the bottom and runs out. Otherwise you will die of hypothermia. Here, I just about made it back before I actually died of not only hypothermia, but also lack of sleep. So obviously you just need to sleep in your bed to get rid of that one, but you do need to make sure you've fed enough. If you haven't eaten enough or you're too cold, it won't let you sleep. So you've got to warm up a little bit and you've also got to make sure you've got enough food in your belly. As day two begins, you'll notice that it has taken some of the food out. So you will make sure you've got plenty stored up in a the chest. Then mushrooms are going to be your best bet or blackberries. But I've got enough now to make the crafting room. Let's craft that and let's make our first axe and some lot picks. Now, if you've been scavenging a lot of them watchtower areas, you should find plenty of nails. What you don't always find loads of is the bolts. That's why you need to make sure you pick up every single pipe that you can get as you get bolts from pipes. As I said, the axe and the lock pick are going to be the most useful, but after that, a map could be good using an old rag and some berries, and the compass is pretty cool as well, but it's not a necessity. I would definitely go for the axe first. I'm also just showing off some of the decorative items. It's all about chilling out in this game if you want to play that mode, so there's going to be lots of items that you can place around your... Go ahead and craft a woodman's axe, and remember that all items you craft will be on the table. They don't automatically go in your inventory. After that, a lock pick. You'll notice there is no durability meters as far as I can tell maybe it just runs out without it actually showcasing or showing but as far as I've been playing it it hasn't actually meant I've had to make a new lock pick or a new axe it seems to last forever next to be crafted after that is the cook room this is why you need lots of that driftwood three pieces four bolts and 12 fir planks now you can chop trees down instead of having to go and grab the fir planks from all around the area when it falls, you should get at least three fur plank pieces, and this is pretty much the best way to get it. You'll also get some sticks as well, so plenty of wood resources from trees. Duh, who would have thought it? So with your newly made axe and your lockpick, go ahead and go to one of the watchtower sites, break into as many of the boxes as possible, taking everything that's inside, and then also look for the locked boxes. If you didn't have enough resources to make the lockpick, don't worry, you can come back here eventually and go ahead and unlock them. You'll just find similar resources or sometimes you'll find a few more things like seeds in the lock boxes more. Eventually, when you've got enough of the resources, you can go ahead and unlock the cooking room and this will also unlock the next stage, which is gonna be the greenhouse. Now with the cooking room, it'll unlock a stove that you can automatically use. You just need to feed it with wood and you can craft and make all sorts of concoctions and food groups. It generally relies on mixing up ingredients. So if you want something that is just gonna replenish your food, well, you can take a look at some of the foods that you've been gathering and it will kind of basically show you that that is good just for food. Then you've got replenishment of health and then you've got replenishment of your temperature. So you can see there it's cooking, it takes a few seconds and then it's done. You don't need to worry about any containers, it automatically just gives it to you in a nice handy container. So one golden chantilly has given me lots of temperature and it's given me about 25-30% food gain. I won't necessarily go through every combination you can make here, but you can clearly see adding different types of food means you get different results and you will be able to make yourself superfood. Last thing to add is that if you do multiple of the same food group, it just increases how much food it gives you or how much of a status effect it gives you. So you can see I'm putting four berries in and it's made it even better and stronger. 
So you will be able to grow your own crops, but the greenhouse is going to require quite a lot of materials, including glue, which is going to be hard to get hold of. So I'm going to be showing that off in a separate video, and it's pretty much more advanced stages. You can see kind of the stuff that you're going to need to get for it. Lots of steel pipes, lots of items. And the glue is even harder to get hold of. You're going to need lime mineral, which you get from a cave. Also larch resin, which you get from a special biome. And you're also going to need a bunch of other stuff as well. Just wanted to show you what it's like though, opening up a chest with your lot pick and kind of the resources you get. Make sure you go back to some of the places you've explored and open up all these, as it's a really good way to get nails and sometimes bolts and saves you using valuable pipes, which are really, really valuable, but are quite hard to get hold of. As you go and forage some of the mushrooms, you're gonna come across these ones, dotty mushrooms. They are in fact not edible at the moment. You're gonna to need to cook them first. Unlike other survival games where you normally get given a compass to start with, it really is a bit of a challenge getting around. The only thing that will pop up is where your cabin is. So it's the only frame of reference you can have when exploring. The items do stack up to a decent amount. However, you will quickly find that you start to become too full. And when you've got an item in your inventory, so far, if you drop it out of your inventory, it pretty much just gets destroyed and disappears. So you can't build yourself a little mound on the floor of items. Once you've picked it up and you've got nowhere else to swap it out or put it in another storage unit, you will lose that item if you drop it. You'll often see bunny rabbits or hares running around. I have not found a way to kill them yet just using my ax. Maybe it takes a bow and arrow. Some other dangers other than bears to take care of are bees. You're going to need to get the wax that's in them, but they can sting you, so be careful. You pretty much have to just run in and grab it and get out very quickly. And I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of armour or some sort of clothing type you can wear later on, or maybe there will be a way to distract the bees. They will chase you for a small amount of time if you do disturb the nest, so just keep running in one direction and then circle back and grab that wax or the honey if you didn't get it the first time. Let's rattle off some of the resources and what they look like when you're looking for them and generally give you tips on what they might do. Starting off with moss, obviously you need that to upgrade some of the rooms. You should come across a cave if you go all the way to the west side and inside this cave you're going to find lime ore. Now lime ore needs to be got with a pickaxe. It was pretty easy to spot in a dark cave. You'll also find a blueprint here in this location as well so make sure you pick it up on the floor. Now we'll do more detailed guide on where you can find all the blueprints but I think this is pretty much just the basics of going out and exploring for the first few days. Obviously there is a big danger in the game unless you've got it on the zen mode which is the bears. Now this is pretty much the only wildlife that I have found that will kill you. Other than maybe getting attacked by the bees or dying from hypothermia or not having any food there really isn't any other dangerous creatures or dangerous things in the game. The bears can be kept away as long as you hide in tall grass or just make sure you keep your distance from them and they're not directly looking at you. I did find though that they are incredibly strong. Once they find you it only takes usually one swipe if you're a bit low on health or maybe two if you don't manage to run away in time. When you are in a dangerous area the music will change and you will get that little eye signal or eye icon in the middle of the screen so that warns you that there is danger nearby. Your best bet is to run away and hopefully survive. As you venture more north, you will find a really pretty biome area. This is pretty much larch. When you chop these trees down, this is where you can get some larch bark or larch resin. And this is what you're going to need to make glue. You can also find another blueprint on this location as well. And if you found the other ones already, it usually is the water can. Remember, the blueprints do lock in order. So it doesn't matter what one you pick up, it should always usually be the lock pick, then the pickaxe, and then the watering can. I'm sure they're going to add more stuff to the map over time and it probably will expand and add even more items to it or biomes but originally I thought it was procedure generated but it's not it's exactly the same map every time so I do hope that the placements of stuff is going to become a bit more random it's probably a good idea that the blueprints at least are random of a way as in it doesn't matter where you go you won't always find the same blueprint in the same location it just matters how many of them you've unlocked to get the next item but you can see I've explored quite a bit of the land last thing about maps is that you can actually make your own map using uh, the berries and one rag but you can also find map hint markers and this will pretty much tell you where some of the resources are around you 
This one showed me more where some lime mineral was and you can see I've already shown how to get the larch trees. So these are really useful at remembering exactly where stuff is on the map. Otherwise, some of the resources can be a bit hard to get. I'm gonna show you a detailed video showing you where to get some of the dog stems as well as cattails and some of the other stuff. I'm briefly gonna go over the requirements to unlock the attic room and then the sewing room, and then I'm pretty much gonna leave you there. You can do a lot of fishing, and that's how you're gonna get a lot of food types, and there's more stuff you can do with doing that as well, but that'll be coming in, in a more advanced video, because this is all really what you probably will be doing in the first few hours. So, storage attic, you're gonna need 28 fur planks, you're gonna need two steel wire, and four nails. There's quite a lot of resources for this one. Definitely with the fur planks, you're gonna be chopping down a lot of trees, as you do only usually get around two or three fur planks from every tree that you chop. It's pretty cool though once you unlock this because it's gonna give you four big massive storage chests and it will have the ability to unlock the sewing room. And for that, you're gonna need dog's bane stems, which I mentioned earlier. They can be pretty hard to get hold of. You'll find them in a ring of mossy stones, but there's usually about eight or nine of them. You also need glue. So I haven't got that stage yet where I'm actually making it, but I do know how to do it all now. So hopefully this is the beginning stages of the game, showing you how to play, kind of mix of guide, let's play, and generally give you my opinion on what's going on. You can see it took me six days to get to this stage. Hopefully it will take you guys a lot sooner now you've seen these tips. In the second part, I will be showing you fishing, I will be showing you how to get glue, how to unlock the sewing room, and also how to unlock the greenhouse. Hope you like this guide. As ever, I am the home of survival. If it's coming out on Xbox or PlayStation, I'll be there first, tell you guys about it, and I'll highlight and showcase all the brand new PC survival games too. So make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you rat bags in another Among Trees video very soon.